All right, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to overlay custom da your data on custom gauges using Dashware. Uh, I'm obviously using Breakace data exported from the Breakace app for mountain biking, but you could probably use the same methods for any kind of custom gauge that you want to use. So hopefully this is helpful for you. If you want the template for these custom gauges that we use, which look like this, Nice moving chart there. If you're after those custom gauges, look in the description and we have a link to the templates that we use so you don't have to kind of mess around building this all from scratch yourself. So hopefully you find that helpful. Well, let's just go ahead and get started. If you haven't heard of Dashware, it's actually pretty awesome the things that you can do. They haven't made an update on it since I started using it, which was five years ago. But there's these really cool gauges that you can do. It can be any kind of data at any data rate and you can overlay it been doing it for years and we really love it like it's really reduces the quality of your video and they haven't updated the software since at least the GoPro Hero 7 and it already reduces the quality quite a lot once you export the video but it's really good to do kind of those basic things and the reason we use it is because it's really nice in mountain biking when you're training you're braking to know exactly where you did it like sometimes with GPS it isn't perfect so overlaying your data on the GoPro there's no question about where you braked there's no question that if it shows that you braked there you braked there so that's really good to be able to do to get that really fine tuning and we've been doing it a lot and people really love it. The only thing is that the, it doesn't take a long time to set up the dashware, but it does take a long time to render. So what I do is I often like really reduce the quality of the video to render it in much less time. But it usually takes like if you do it in the highest quality, it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes to do like one mountain bike run. So it is quite time consuming just in the rendering process. But the setup isn't too bad once you have the template set up and once you have uh, your data profiles. So that's what I'm going to talk you through. So let's go ahead and upload. Uh, let's go ahead and start a new project. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and actually just create a new one just from scratch. Uh, I might just save that just in case. All right, you can see I have some from quite a long time ago. We'll use that break ace template. And we'll just call this. Okay, test, which I already actually made this video and I'll actually put a link to that. The one actually I made the data overlay for Jamie and then he went and made an awesome video of the break case method uh, for his YouTube channel. So you should definitely check that out. All right. First thing we want is our video and our data file. Now, all right. So I got my video in there. The other thing that I need to do is get my data file. So let me download my data file and show you how easy that is to do in the break case app. So here's my ride in the Breakcase app. Obviously, super interactive. You can view all your braking stuff, which if you're, uh, I'm not sure if everyone watching this video already has Breakcase, but hopefully, because it's next level mountain bike analysis. And what we're going to do is get this data onto the video. And that's super easy to export. Just click on export and there it is. So I will upload that in the dashboard. So I already have these Breakcase data profiles. Let me click on this one and just click edit it. Like what you would maybe do is you would name one and then add it. I'm just going to edit this one so you can see what I did. You get this window pop up. Now in the CSV of the export, you have these headings and then you have these columns. So obviously time, distance right there, and then lat long, elevation, Etc. Etc. So this strips back uh, the the CSV to the most basic type. You want to make sure some of these are set, like the separator for the columns is a comma, right? So we have make sure that's ticked. So each column is separated by a comma. We have a period for the decimal place. So this is just so the system can start to understand what the data is saying to it. We always have to mark the heading. So we mark that header line. So I have that marked, it'll show up as green. And then you want to mark the data start. So data starts as soon as you start recording, which is in the export. So we mark that as the start. 
one of the things you sometimes have to do is set the time because it, it'll, if you go ahead and you just click, okay, I'm ready to rock, it won't know that where the time starts. So I can't remember what the actual pop-up that comes up is, but you need to set that the time starts here. So you might have to do something like that and set something. And I really can't remember what it is, but it should be kind of obvious. Just try a few things and you can't mess it up. So there is my data profile. Make sure you save it. I'm calling it Breakcase 2023. And there we go. Breakcase 2023. Add. So you'll see my data file should pop up there. There we go. Um, this is obviously an older start title. Let me get rid of that. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just have it not show at all. Once you download the template, you should be able to mess around with this. You can see that it changed the format based on the new ratio of my video. So what I need to do is get these where I want them. Now these charts are pretty interesting because they work a little bit differently than most of the charts I see people use because this chart moves with your data. So it's actually two charts overlaid on top of each other. They're just duplicated. And this one says rear, the other one says front over here, and the rear is missing. So when you change the um, transparency of the gauge, you'll be able to see one over the other, and you just make sure that these are lined up. So all I did was make one gauge, duplicated it, changed the transparency, and they can overlay on top of each other. So you may have to mess with that. I think the chart is probably the one thing that is maybe a little bit different that not everyone does. And because it actually moves, the data moves within the chart. And I can't remember actually exactly what thing I had to select for that. I think it was this, show current line. So that means it moves with your chart. So if you want the data to move, you can try that. That should be in the template, I would hope. Okay. So and since these are overlaid on each other, I don't want to mess around with having them not perfectly aligned. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight both of those. Change the size. You can make it however big you want. My computer isn't really liking this too much. It's... Oh, there we go. Here's the logo. It's an old logo. I should maybe change that to be our newer logo, which is white. The slowness is just my computer being really painful. You can fast forward through that if you want, but we're almost done. Timer's nice to have. And then here's the map. I usually just actually delete the map. Okay, so if you wanted to add any gauge, you can, and you can really customize like any gauge that you want. It's very cool little software. So all you do is drag and drop that in, and you're ready to rock. Okay, one of the more important things that you're going to want to do is synchronize the data with your video. So if you have used... Your, if you've used the Breakcase app to control your GoPro, which you can do, and we didn't on this day, but if you have, it'll be super easy for you to synchronize because the data file and the video should already be synchronized. But check out this one where it's already recording. The GoPro is already recording before I hit record on the Breakcase app. We are just having trouble because we had so many GoPros that day. We had trouble connecting them all. You can kind of go across. This is normally how I would start the GoPro if I didn't have them all synced. I would have the video recording and then show myself recording the start of the break case ride. So if I scroll across to that, wait for when I actually hit record. Okay. 
So then now I want to sync the start of the actual data file because I know the actual data file has just started. So move that all the way to the beginning of the data file because that's what you're syncing. And sync it with a video. Okay. Now we want to input our data into this chart. So let's go to our project. It's sometimes a little easier because you can't access the chart behind that. So click on this one. Let's input from break power. Since we already input what our data profile was, that's easy to do. It's already in there. We have all these things that we could select from, but obviously we want break power for the front. And then do the same thing for the rear. All right, easy enough. Now, I know that in this run, I didn't break really, really hard because it was just kind of a fast trail with nothing to really stop for. So I can see that this scale goes up to 3,500 watts, which we, we definitely hit that, but not on this trail. So let me go ahead and change that so the scale doesn't look as funky and you can actually see the magnitude of these break events. I'll click on that one. Oops. Just highlight it and then go to these tools and fix it. Okay, it looks massive in there. Uh, let's go to this chart. And we want to set the max of the data to 2,000 watts. Let's just pick a nice round 2,000. And save that. And then do the same thing for the rear. Oops. Okay, that's cool. So now they're both lined up. The, nothing changed here, so there's nothing funky with one over top of the other. We're like outlining it, because remember they are two different charts. They're lined up and we can see the data is about to start. So we have that all synced up, which is cool. Now you can mess with that, right? You can change where the data is synced. So you would click uncheck this and then move the video. Now you want to be careful you don't totally undo all of your project by unsyncing the data and then moving everything because it might be hard to get it synced back up. But it may help if for some reason your data is out of sync, which does happen. So let me just play this so you can see what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can hear the audio, but we had both had microphones on. Cool, so you can see the data moving, which is great. That's exactly what you want. The problem is it doesn't look perfect when you're watching it in this software because it's just so slow. So you can see that it's real kind of chunky and jerky. And if you wanted to try and line it up perfectly by using just this software, you might miss out because it isn't. it does change once you run into the video. So you really need to be careful with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and render this video and hope that everything is perfect. And this is what I end up doing a lot when I don't have everything perfectly synced. You might have to kind of bump it by uh, this, that, or the other. And this is how I'd do it if it wasn't lined up and I knew it. I would unsync that data and move the video. So you can see the frame of the video is moving, but the data isn't. So that's how you can fine tune that. The only way to actually fully know with Dashware is to render the video and check it. So let me do that. Save it. Make sure that I don't lose everything. And then we'll do create video. Now, if you're just checking to make sure that everything's lined up and you want to be able to do things more quickly, I just turn the quality all the way down. So it won't be zero quality, but it will be much faster. So, all right, cool. So that video is done rendering. Here it is. The quality isn't super good. It did take a while to render. I think we changed some things with the quality because Jamie and I were sending this one back and forth to do a YouTube video. 
so it normally wouldn't take 30 minutes but i'm pretty happy with it it's not perfectly lined up you can see that the data actually starts moving not bang on when i hit record you can see that bottom now it starts recording so it is a not synced up perfectly but actually i'm real happy with how it turned out once i watched the video so you can actually see that it looks good right so obviously if you sync the gopro with the Breakace app and you start the Breakace at the same time as the GoPro, you shouldn't really have any problems. But if I wanted to go back in and change any of this, I would open up the Dashware app, unsync it, and then move the video to be exactly where it needed to be so it was perfect. So that's how it works. If you find any cool tricks or anything like that, let me know. If you find this useful, also let us know. We'd be happy to share your Breakace videos with other Breakace users so they can see how you're using it. Uh, if you find anything else cool or interesting or have any questions or comments, let us know. And don't forget to check in the description for the template that we use. I'll update the logo here, and you'll be able to use the same template that we use. All right. Thanks for that. Enjoy.